Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In the previous sessions, we estimated point density. In the first session, basically, we had the point count within each 100 kilometer square. In the second session, we made uh, kernel density rasters, and from those kernel density rasters, came up with polygons of daily hotspots. In this session, we're going to map using points and interpolate the quantity of the points. So our example will be depth. And the depth of each point could be estimated from LIDAR using LIDAR in shallow, clear water. Or the depth in this example is from sonar. And the depth is in meters below the surface. So this is a hypothetical example where we have 1,000 depth points, and we're going to interpolate the depth from the surface of the water to the ocean bottom for these 1,000 depth points. So as an example, here's the distribution of these 1,000 points where each point has the depth to the ocean bottom. And we're going to interpolate to a raster using two surface tools. And they're the two most common tools used for spatial interpolation. And the first tool is the Inverse Distance Weighting Interpolation Tool, or IDW. Okay, so we have the IDW Inverse Distance Weighting Tool. And we're going to interpolate for every point the depth in meters to a raster called IDW Interpolation.tiff. The output cell size will make the same cell size as we have a raster, which is the actual depth. So basically, that raster that is the actual depth, the cell size will be the same as the raster you downloaded for this week's data, actual depths.tiff. And then if we go to environments, we want to set our extent so it perfectly matches our actual depths.tiff. So under environments, processing extent, the same as actual depths.tiff. And then we'll snap to that raster, actual depths.tiff. And then just OK and OK. And then we'll assign a color ramp where a deep blue value is at a depth of minus 475. And the most shallow value, 3, will have a reddish color. And that will be using a two standard deviation contrast stretch. And then just OK. So here's our interpolated raster from our points. And basically, we'll do the same thing using our second tool for interpolation called Krieging. OK, so when we use the IDW inverse distance wetting tool, basically what it did was, for every cell, go out and find the 12 neighboring points. And then the points that are closer to the center of the cell have a higher weight and the points that are further away from the center of the cell have a lower weight. And this power parameter, that basically controls the significance of, as the points get further and further away, uh, how the weight should be distributed. And we use the default value of 2 to create our interpolated surface. OK, the Krieging tool. Krieging is a geostatistical method, so basically uses the correlation among points to try to predict the quantities as we go through this process. So Krieging assumes that the distance or direction between our sample points reflects a spatial correlation that can explain the pattern of our depths. So basically it's using the spatial autocorrelation among points as it does the estimates. So we'll do the same thing using Krieging. Um, there's different models. We'll take the default model, which is spherical. And our output cell size, once again, will make it the same as our validation raster. And the number of points to search will be the closest 12 points to every pixel. So basically, the output cell size and the extent will make the same as our actual depth.tiff.
and we'll output to a raster kriegerinterpolation.tiff and then just OK. And then we'll assign the same symbology. So if we go to import symbology from our IDW interpolation and then just OK and OK. So here is our Kriging raster and here is our IDW raster. So they appear similar. So now let's look at the difference between our Kriging raster, IDW raster, and the actual depth for a pixel. So we'll zoom in somewhere and then use the identify tool for all layers. So here the actual depth was 414 meters and we had the same interpolated surface of 414 and in this location the actual depth was 417, our IDW estimate was 420.2 and our Kriging estimate was 419.75. So the next step is for every pixel what was the actual depth what was the IDW interpolation, and what was the Kriging interpolation. So what we'll do is use the sample tool to get all that information into a table. So our input rasters will be our IDW interpolation.tiff, our Kriging interpolation.tiff, and then for every pixel in the actual depths.tiff, give us those values and we'll output to this table called interpolation depths.tiff and nearest means just for every pixel whatever pixel that this is sitting in give us that value and then just OK. So now we have for every pixel what the actual depth was what the interpolated depth was using inverse, inverse distance weighting and what the interpreted depth was using Kriging and also what that pixel location was. So for example a pixel location of 439055 in the X, 7183585 in the Y. So to find that pixel location, we can use this XY tool from our toolbar, and we'll go to X, so right mouse click copy, control V, paste, and then Y, copy, control V, paste. And then we could either zoom to that location, flash at it, add a point there, add a labeled point, or add a callout. So we'll add a label point at that location. And then we'll find where that's located. So it's right up here. So basically it's the first pixel. And then we could use the identify tool to check the result of our table. So for this pixel, the actual depth was 323 meters which was correct. The IDW interpolated depth was 325.7 meters, which is here, and the interpolated from Kriging was 323.2 meters. So it all checks out. Okay, so then we'll add a double precision field for the error of our IDW interpolated estimates and then the error of our Kriging interpolated estimates. And then we'll use the field calculator to calculate those errors. So field calculator, it would be the actual depth minus the estimated depth in IDW. And then the actual depth minus our Kriging estimates. Okay, so for example, for the first pixel, the error in the IDW was 2.7 meters, and the error in our Kriging was 0.2 meters. And then the next pixel, we have perfect prediction because that's where our sample point was sitting. So anywhere we have perfect prediction, that's where our sample point was sitting, so we actually had the actual 
depth at that location. And anywhere the error is not zero, that's where it was interpolated for our estimates. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you about these errors in the IDW surface and the error in the Kriging surface.